Let's review modular arithmetic. And we're going to be talking about modular arithmetic working with integers. And the basic idea is you divide by n and you take the remainder. So let's do an example where n equals 3. So for example, suppose we were looking at 14 and we wanted to look at that mod 3. That's how we write modular arithmetic. So in this case, we're looking at dividing 14 by 3 and looking at the remainder. And we see that we end up getting a remainder of 2 because 14 equals 3 times 4 plus 2. And this symbol here, we write that symbol as is congruent to. So I could say 14 mod 3 is congruent to 2. Another example, suppose we wanted to look at 9 mod 3. So again, we would see how many times does 3 go into 9, and we see it goes in evenly, so there's a remainder of 0. And that's because 9 is the same thing as 3 times 3 plus 0. That's our remainder there. And how about 2? What if we had 2 mod 3? What would that look like? So 2 mod 3, well, we see that uh, 3 going into 2, how would that work? Well, let's see. If I have 2 here, can I write that as 3 times something plus a remainder? And I can if I think about 0 here. 3 times 0 is 0, and then I would have a remainder of 2. So I see that this is congruent to 2. How about negative 1? If we look at a negative number here, what would that be mod 3? So again, if you want to try and figure it out, imagine trying to write negative 1 as 3 times something plus a remainder. And in this case, I could imagine it being 3 times negative 1 plus a remainder of 2. So I see this is congruent to 2. And we'll look at one more example. How about negative 5? What would negative 5 mod 3 look like? So negative 5 mod 3 is congruent to, well, again, I'll try and write negative 5 as 3 times a number, and in this case, I'll make it times negative 2, that would be negative 6, and then I would have a remainder here of 1. So this is congruent to 1. So let's give the formal definition of congruence modulo n. Let n be a positive integer. Then two integers, a and b, are said to be congruent mod n, and we write that as a with this symbol here. It looks like an equal sign with an extra line. Uh, a is congruent to b mod n if n divides a minus b. Okay, so for example, if we have n equaling 3, and we want to look at all the possible remainders and all the congruences. So for example, a remainder of 0. Okay, what would the congruences look like here? So what would be all the things that would give a remainder of 0? And in this case, we get a set that looks like multiples of 3. So we have negative 9 and negative 6 and negative 3 and 0 and 3 and 6 and 9 and so on. And that's because all of these uh, mod 3 have a remainder of 0. How about a remainder with 1? So if I have a remainder of 1, that's going to look like all the things that when you divide them by 3 have remainders of 1, things like negative 8 and negative 5 and negative 2 and 1 and 4 and 7 and 10. And last one, how about a remainder of 2? If I have a remainder of 2, all the things that would be congruent to 2 here would be things like negative 7 and negative 4 and negative 1 and 2, and 5, and 8, and 11, because all of these things, uh, when you imagine dividing with 3, would have a remainder of 2. So if we look at this, these sets here, uh, if we wanted to do one more remainder of 3, we would see that, well, you wouldn't have a remainder of 3 if you're uh, dividing by 3 and looking at remainder. So this is complete here. And this looks a lot like a partition. And we know from before that a partition has an equivalence relation. So let's try and figure out what is the equivalence relation. So here's my definition of congruence modulo n. And here's my claim. Let n be a positive integer. Then the relation of congruence mod n is an equivalence relation on z. So let's try and prove that first. So an outline of the proof well, this is an equivalence relation, so we need to show three things. We need to show reflexive, symmetric, and transitive in order to show that something is an equivalence relation. Okay, uh, 
So to start off with, we're trying to show that when we have A congruent to B mod N, that this thing is an equivalence relation, and we know that that's the same thing as N dividing A minus B. Okay, so the first thing we need to show is that it's reflexive because uh, that's uh, the first of the three properties for an equivalence relation. So that would say that A is congruent to A mod N. Well, why does that work? Well, let's rewrite it in terms of division here. That would say that N divides A minus A or N divides zero. And sure, of course it does. So that works. How about symmetric? That's the next one. So for symmetric, I start by saying, okay, let's suppose that A is congruent to B mod N. And if it's symmetric, I should be able to show that B is congruent to A mod N. Well, this means that N is congruent, or I'm sorry, N divides A minus B. And that's the same thing as, hmm, how can I rewrite it? How about as negative B minus A? And then this is another way of saying that B is congruent to A mod N. And I think then that works. And the last one we have is transitive. So for transitive, I start out with two assumptions. I say A is congruent to B mod N. And I also say that B is congruent to C mod N. And I need to show that A is congruent to C mod N. Okay, well this means that N divides a minus B, and this means that N divides B minus C. So then wouldn't it be true that N would divide A minus B plus B minus C? That has to be true if N divides each of these individually, it has to divide their sum. But that's the same thing as N divides A minus C, and that's what I was trying to show. Okay, let's do a formal proof. So here is the formal proof. Let n be a fixed positive integer and let a, b, and c be any integers. And I'm first going to show that this uh, equivalence relation, or that this relation of congruence mod n is reflexive. So note that a is congruent to a mod n implies that n divides a minus a. But n divides a minus a is the same as n dividing 0, which is true for any integer, any positive integer here. So congruence mod n is reflexive. How about symmetric? Suppose that A is congruent to B mod N. Then N divides A minus B. This means that A minus B has to be equal to K times N for some K that's an integer. And that's what it means for something to divide something else. Now, negative A minus B is the same thing as B minus A. So B minus A equals negative KN, where negative K is also an integer. Therefore, N divides B minus A and B is congruent to A mod N. So congruence mod N is symmetric. The last one we have is transitive. Suppose that A is congruent to B mod N and B is congruent to C mod N. Then N divides A minus B and N divides B minus C. This means that A minus B equals R times N and B minus C equals S times N for some integers R and S. So A minus B plus B minus C, that's the same thing as A minus C. So A minus C must equal Rn plus Sn, which is, if I factor out the N, R plus S times N, and R plus S is definitely an integer. So therefore, N divides A minus C, and A is congruent to C mod N. Thus, congruence mod N is transitive. And since I've shown that congruence mod N is reflexive, symmetric, and transitive, it is indeed an equivalence relation on Z. So now that I've shown it's an, an equivalence relation, what do the equivalence classes look like? Let's look at the example where we have n equals 3. So the equivalence class represented by 0 here, that would be all the multiples of 3. Remember, these are the things with a remainder of 0. And I can write that as 3z, where z is the set of integers. And then when we have the remainders of 1, we saw that we have a set that looks like this. And I can write that as 1 plus 3z. You take all the things in 3z and you add 1 to each thing. Finally, we have the things with a remainder of 2, and that looks like 2 plus 3z. And for n equals 4, we see something similar here. If we have a remainder of 0, we get multiples of 4, and that looks like 4z. And then remainder of 1 looks like 1 plus 4z. A remainder of 2 looks like 2 plus 4z. And a remainder of 3 looks like 3 plus 4z. So in general, there are n equivalence classes. 
We have nz, 1 plus nz, 2 plus nz, all the way up to n minus 1 plus nz. So the next thing that I want to try and show is let n be a positive integer, then the equivalence relation of congruence mod n has exactly n equivalence classes given by nz, 1 plus nz, 2 plus nz, all the way up to n minus 1 plus nz. And I'll start with an outline of this proof. And let's look at what we had for the example of n equals 3. So we saw that we had with the remainder of 0, that equivalence class was 3 times the set of integers. And remember then that I was writing 0 as 3 times 0, and then I had a remainder of 0. Okay, how about the next one? That would be things with a remainder of 1, and that was 1 plus 3z. And I was rewriting that as 1 being equal to 3 times, in this case, 0 plus 1. Okay. How about 2? Things with a remainder of 2. That was 2 plus 3z. And I can imagine then 2 writing that as 3 times 0 plus 2. Okay. So this kind of thing, this should remind you of the division algorithm. So in general, if I say a is, say, the equivalence class of A, and I'll just allow us to talk about it in general here, and let's say that we have A equaling QN plus R. That's by the division algorithm, if you remember. Um, okay, and we had, for this remainder here, 0 has to be less than R, which was less than N. All right. Uh, well, let's see here. Uh, a minus r, that's equal to qn, right, if I just rewrite it like that. And that means that n must divide a minus r. So that means that a and r are really the same equivalence class here. Because a is congruent then to uh, r mod n by this statement here. And then we can look at how many equivalence classes we have. If we remember that we have this condition for the division algorithm here, that r is greater than or equal to 0 but less than n. So that means that r can be 0 or 1 or 2 all the way up to n minus 1. And if you add all of these different things up, we see that there are n of them. And so there are indeed going to be n equivalence classes when we look at each one of these individually here. And one more thing, are they distinct? How do we know that they're not really, we're not counting two of the same thing here by accident? So suppose I have 0 less than r less than n, but then I also have another letter, say s, that meets that same condition here. Well, if that's true, then r is congruent to s mod n. And that's the same thing, or I should say if this is true, or if r is congruent to s mod n, then that's the same thing as n dividing r minus s. And r minus s has to be 0, which means r equals s. Now, why is this? r minus s has to be 0. Well, n is dividing r minus s. But remember that r is less than n, and s is less than n. And so the only way that n can divide r minus s, where both r and s are non-negative, is if r minus s equals 0. And so we see that this thing and this thing, these are really saying the same thing, that r is congruent to s mod n means that r equals s, so they are indeed distinct. Okay, let's look at a formal proof. So here is a formal proof. Let n be a positive integer, and for any a that's an integer, let this uh, bracket a be the equivalence class of a. By the division algorithm, I can write a as q times n plus r, where q and r are integers, and remember that r is greater than or equal to 0, but less than n. Thus, a minus r equals q times n, and n divides a minus r. This means that a is congruent to r mod n. So we see that the equivalence class of a is the same thing as the equivalence class of r. And since r is greater than or equal to 0 but less than n, there have to be n of these equivalence classes. And they're given by nz, 1 plus nz, 2 plus nz, all the way up to n minus 1 plus nz. Suppose now that we also have an s that is greater than or equal to 0 but less than n. Okay, then let's suppose also that r is congruent to s mod n. Then n divides r minus s, and this means that r minus s equals 0, so that r equals s.
Now remember, this had to be true because both R and S are non-negative and they're less than N. Therefore, the N equivalence classes are all distinct.